passively you're selling a grand's worth of wheat and then you decide oh well you know i could do a bit more money in my pocket well you just put more time and effort into advertising whether that's through content creation google ad or networking just going to networking events and being like i have this. there's a lot of buzz around quitting your job and pursuing your dream as a digital nomad or launching your own product and having that be your main source of income but for a lot of people that's just far too much risk we all want that extra money in our pocket but do we really want to risk our main job to get it? Well, as a software engineer, you can actually pull off a lot more than most people because chances are you have a good work-life balance. You might be hybrid or remote, so you've got no travel time. You've got that hour or so to spare in the evening that could be actually growing your income. And especially as winter's coming and you're going to be going out less, leaving the house only seems a lot less exciting. Well, what better time than to actually start getting that ball rolling? So let's have a look at five ideas that you can use to actually start putting an extra thousand dollars a week in your pocket. Right, the first one is fairly obvious, but I actually have some friends that make some really good money doing this and that's freelance development so that's going on things like upwork top tool fiverr and looking for short-term work now i think a lot of people turn their nose up at this because they hear stories about how it's saturated by workers from abroad who charge next to nothing for an hour's work but a lot of the companies that actually care about having good quality code and getting freelancers actually don't tend to favor this they're looking for more expensive people because they're aware that normally people who can charge more are providing better value so what i'd recommend is you set your hourly rate at between 50 to 100 dollars because this is the kind of category that would make it worth your time, but also put you in the eyes of the companies that are actually looking for serious dev. That seems to be what they're mostly expecting. Another one of the criticisms of this side hustle is that, oh, you're just trading your time for more time. So, you know, I'm working my nine to five and then I get in and I spend another two, three hours working the same thing without any chance of it expanding. And that is kind of true. It's not like, it's not like the idea of, you know, building the SaaS and it blows up and, you know, your income becomes exponential. But what it does do is it gets you on the roads to actually being able to choose when and where you work which could be the next step to getting you one of those exponential incomes if you're working nine to five monday to friday then the chances are you don't have the time to start a SaaS that would explode your income you'd probably only want to work you know three days a week and then spend those days that you've just got working on that thing that might make you even more and the way that you get to that is doing exactly this freelance development if you can build a profile where you're consistently getting work and you're being paid a lot more than you would for your salaried job well it's a double win the next one is content creation and for those of you that are immediately afraid of the idea of putting your face on the internet or talking to a camera because don't get me wrong this does feel quite unnatural you can also do technical blogging but before we talk about that software engineer mentors cost about 66 dollars for just a 45 minute session i mean look at this guy he costs 81 dollars most of you guys know how to code anyway and do it day in day out for work so they probably don't even apply to you but if you're interested in fast tracking your career and salary or you want to start building alternative streams of income with the skills you already have like this guy who makes 96,000 a year literally just talking to a camera about what he did that day at work or this guy who's making $83,000 a month from the SAS he launched I can help you start moving towards that so I've thrown five sessions on a Saturday that you can book and I'm only charging $50 it's the only time I could spare so once they're gone they're gone if you're interested link in the description and there are plenty of examples of people who actually make a living doing that not only are you going to get things like ad revenue from adverts for either your blog website or YouTube puts in front of the person watching the video but it gives you the opportunity to get sponsorships and if you can find companies that genuinely make a difference and they're providing value to the people that you're making content for then it's a win-win you get paid and that person gets to see something that otherwise they might not have that would genuinely make a difference I'll give you an example I'm not sponsored by eight sleep but that is a company that I genuinely think would massively improve most software engineers' productivity, and a lot of people just haven't heard of it. And it's so good that I would talk about it right now for free. Just by me mentioning it, you might not have heard of 8sleep before, and you might go Google it and see, oh, shit, that's going to massively improve my sleep. Sleep is a very major part of being a good software engineer, because if you're tired, you're not going to be able to think through complex problems. Click, purchase. They've made some money, and if, and if I had a link in my description for 8sleep, I'd get a kickback off of that. It's a win for everyone. Now, the income on this can, can vary massively. The guy that I would look to for this is the guy I talked about while talking about the mentoring. There's a guy called Web Dev Cody, and he talks about how he doesn't plan at all. He just records an hour or two after work, and then edits it down and uploads it. And he's managed to make about 80000 a year with just that system. He doesn't have any fancy editing. He doesn't have any fancy lighting, but that's his income. So food for thought. This could be quite slow to begin, but once it starts picking up pace, it could be a real earner for you. And you don't even have to talk to a camera. You could spend that hour writing a blog post. Take a look at John Skeet, somebody who became a prolific blogger and then sold a book based on what he had learned from all of the things that he was blogging about. And I mean, that guy's making a killing there. All right, next up, online 
courses or tutoring. Think of places like Udemy, Skillshare, or you've got places like uh, Coding Tutor and Wizen for one-to-one -one tutoring. I actually showed you earlier, again, when I was talking about my mentoring, how much people are charging for these things. It's, it's like $60 and up. And that's let alone the courses, because if you can create a course that becomes popular on a paid site, well, that's even better than YouTube, because the difference with YouTube is that they're waiting for you to get ads. With Udemy and Skillshare, they're just going to pay you straight up, because every time one of their users is watching that, well, they're directly paying that company. And the way you got to look at this is that if you're a software engineer, there is almost certainly things that you can teach, because in order for you to do your job, you must be proficient at five or six different teachable things, whether it's, you know, the coding languages that you're writing in, using the IDEs that you're using, the way that you track changes in codes, your Git workflow. Literally every aspect of what you do day to day at work can be broken down into a course that can be sold. And you might be thinking, oh, but, you know, so many people have already done it. One, your tech stack is probably quite unique. Like, if you really think about specifically what you do at work, it's going to be quite different to other companies. Two, you're unique. The way that you talk about things and the way that you describe it is not going to be the same as somebody else. And three, other people are going to think exactly the same thing. They're going to think, oh, why teach about this thing? Because chances are someone's already done it. You want to be one of the people that actually pulls the trigger and goes for it, because those are the people that are making very good money off of this. Right, so the next one we kind of touched on earlier, and this can be quite a large undertaking, and it can eat up your weekends. Trust me, I've done it. But it also can be one of the more rewarding ones. This is the kind of thing that can scale to quite quickly mean that you don't have to work. Think four hour work week. And that's building and selling a micro SaaS. We're not going to go for anything major hitting here. You know, this is why we talked about earlier. It might be better to pick one of the other examples on this list before you do this one because it's going to consume a lot of time. But once you've got a product that you can sell and market, that's the bulk of the work done. And then your income is based on how many people you can get it to who want to buy it. Passively, you're selling a grand's worth a week. And then you decide, oh, well, you know, I could do a bit more money in my pocket. Well, you just put more time and effort into advertising, whether that's through content creation, Google ads, or networking. Just going to networking events and being like, I have this product for whoever your target consumer is. That's going to drive sales. A really good example of this, who, again, I mentioned earlier, is Mark Lou, who, you know, made quite a simple web template that costs, I think, $200. And it's making him 100000 a month. You could probably make a web template in your own language. And that's even an idea. If this guy did it in Next.js, why don't you make exactly the same thing in your tech stack? Because there's a guarantee that there's going to be a market for it because nobody's done it. And you know that it works because Mark Liu is currently making a lot of money doing that. So huge chance of success here. Quite hard to get started. Also, this goes quite nicely hand in hand with the content creation thing because if you're creating content, you've actually got people that you can show your SaaS to. And they might say, you know what, mate? That's a terrible idea. And it could be. A terrible idea and the beauty of having your content creation is that you're going to hear that feedback quite quickly and i think the the biggest gotcha here is be careful with the size of the SaaS that you're going to build it's probably better to make lots of very basic ideas and see which one actually resonates with the community and start selling and then improve upon it than it is to try and build the perfect thing out the gate and release it because you're going to have no background on whether it's actually something people even want to buy there's actually a really good book on this that i'd recommend called the million dollar weekend by noah kagan and it's literally this idea of actually he takes it a step further of instead of making a very simple version try and just sell the idea before you start producing it because if you can sell the idea and then produce it in your spare time then you know that that thing is going to be worth your time and effort you're not going to spend three months building something for nobody to nobody to buy and then lastly one that i didn't actually think was that possible but as i've spent longer as a software engineer and i've grown a bigger network more and more people that i know as they mature in their career and move up to you know senior manager those kinds of levels are picking a third alternative path which actually can start while you're working which is consulting for startups or even consulting for existing businesses once you've got enough experience you can actually start offering that guidance at a very high rate as temporary work, which again, we only want temporary work because this is going to be stuff that you want to do either in your evenings or on your weekends. And if you can build upon this consultancy to the point that you become so regular that you could quit your job to do it, you could be charging far more than the tutoring. These kind of payments come up to like anywhere from $100 an hour to six, $700 an hour. And like I said, this isn't uncommon. Just with my network alone, I'd say about four or five of the software engineers that I know, and I maybe know 50, so what's that, 10%, do consulting work, and it pays very, very well. And the way that they started wasn't, oh, I'm going to quit my job and become a consultant. No, they just started doing consultancy on the side, and it picked up. Now, I've given you some good ideas, but there's some things that you need to do to make sure that you don't just completely fail epically, because it's very easy to back yourself into a corner here. So the first thing that's most important, set boundaries. Make sure that you're actually defining reasonable times for you to be able to work. People aren't made to work 13-hour days. You can do it, don't get me wrong, and you'll know people that work two, three days straight and they don't even sleep, you know, and then you've got the other guy who gets in from work and then he works until he falls asleep and he does that for a week. And then the following week, what happens? They burn out and they end up hating what they're doing and they stop doing it. We're here to try and build this into something recurring week by week 
for years to come. And the way you do that is you learn where your limits are and start small, slowly build it up. And if you find that you're not feeling recovered and you're feeling more stressed than usual, or your sleep is getting worse, or you're sleeping and you still feel tired, maybe it's time to rein it back a bit. Also, like I said, with a lot of these, the content creation kind of plays into all of them. It's building that authority. So like I said, I've got mentoring in the description if you don't know where to get started with that, but just try, start building a personal brand, whether it's on X, LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever fits you if you think that you're somebody who is good at again witty one-liners x is your place but if you prefer to write long technical documents you've got things like substack and then lastly you don't have to just pick one of these things and commit to it fully try them all iterate with developers we know that the best way to get a solution is to try lots of different things and see what works don't be afraid to say okay that hasn't that hasn't worked out for me but that doesn't mean i won't find something that will and if you're interested in scaling your income and going from you know side hustles to something serious I've got a video about that, so click here and hopefully it helps. Cheers.